Welcome back everyone. Today we are talking about one of my favorite topics, complexion. So this is my signature creamy complexion routine. I'm going to show you uh, some tips and techniques to achieve this dewy, very natural looking base that almost has a bit of a soft focus finish to it. Enjoy. Good morning everyone. Welcome to my bedroom. To begin this creamy complexion look, we're going to start with arguably the most important step, which is skin prep. So a few days ago, I dermaplaned my face. If you're not familiar, dermaplaning is shaving the face. I've got a video all about it. I'll pop it in a card. Um, but my skin is quite fussy. So I have to use, it's, it's fussy about the type of razor. And this is my favorite razor, the Revlon Eyebrow Razor. I take this all over my face, between the brows, on the upper lip, on the chin, on the cheeks, and this is instant gratification. It makes your skin so smooth, so soft, foundation lays so beautifully. That's something that anyone can do to really improve your base makeup overnight. And next we're gonna move on to a little bit of skin prep. So I'm gonna start with the Beauty of Joseon Glow Deep Serum. This is new to me, but I do love these Korean and Japanese essences and serums. They're just so good for splashy, splashy. I find that these essences and serums are great for addressing dehydration. Just really delivers a lot of moisture and hydration to the surface of the skin. Once I have splishy splashied with my essence, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of an eye cream. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Cryo Recovery Eye Serum. I like this one under makeup because it's quite lightweight. It's more of like a gel consistency. Oh, love a cold tip. Just a really lightweight eye serum of sorts so that my under eye products are being applied on a hydrated base. And then after my eye serum, I'm gonna go straight into my sunscreen. I'm just wearing this on a regular Thursday and I've gotta wear my sunscreen every day. This is the well-loved Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics. I don't think that I've ever loved a sunscreen as much as this. I think it genuinely improves the uh, condition of my base. It makes my base more dewy, more creamy. Um, I find that it doesn't get oily throughout the day. I love this sunscreen. So I'm gonna generously apply all over the face and neck. Such a beautiful base for makeup. And this sunscreen has great protection, very sophisticated filters, so it's um, protecting your skin in addition to being a beautiful base for makeup. I do like to give it about five, 10 minutes just to really sink in before I start applying my base makeup. So this is a good time to tell you that part of this video is in collaboration with Nikia Joy Cosmetics. I have known Nikia for years and it is an absolute pleasure to watch her flourish. One of my favorite powders actually is from the brand, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. A bit later. On that note, let's go in with primer. This is the Nikia Joy Cosmetics Matte Base Primer. I'm going to use this in particular in any areas where I have some texture because mattifying the skin reduces the amount of visible texture. It's like an optical illusion. It makes everything look a bit smoother. So I'm going to apply this primer onto any areas where I have visible pores. That's kind of, for me, it's more the tip of my nose, a little bit around my cheeks here. And I'm gonna put this a little bit kind of around the crevice of my nose. This is where my makeup wants to split and fade and get oily and uh, transfer throughout the day. So this kind of primer will address all of those concerns. Whether you have oily, oily breakthrough on the T-zone throughout the day, even if you're oily all over, you can apply this all over. It's your face, it's your canvas. I like to spot treat because my skin isn't very oily, but I still find that a matte primer does beautiful smoothing, soft focus things for my complexion. Good for longevity as well. A bit of a primer helps things last all day. Amazing. For all of my oily friends out there, I think the best route 
for a long lasting base for oily skin is to pair a matte primer with a long wearing foundation formula, a good powder and a great setting spray. I think that is the route to longest lasting foundation. For my long time viewers, this will be no surprise to you. This is the My Almighty To Go Essence In Foundation Cushion. This is a product I've been using for years and I'm back on it. It's just one of the most glorious foundations. Makes my skin look angelic. Angelic is the word. I've learned that if I really brighten this circle here around the center of my face, I think as I'm getting older, I'm starting to get a little bit more hollow around the eyes and losing a bit of that volume there. And so I find that if I really brighten this area kind of between my eyes and underneath my eyes, I need a lot less coverage everywhere else because my skin just looks luminous as is. So I'm gonna really focus on brightening there, brightening the center of the face. And this is a great brightening foundation. Some other brightening foundation formulas that I really like are L'Oreal True Match Nude. This is a new favorite um, from the drugstore, really like that one. Also something like uh, the Dior Air Flash, really feather lightweight, so gorgeous and natural looking on the skin. But the Armani Essence To Go Foundation in Cushion, oh, there is something special about it. Makes the skin look angelic. Angelic, angelic is, is the word. word. So I'm gonna take a really light layer over much of the face really keeping it very thin around the outer corners of the face, primarily because I don't want it to get in my hair. <laughs> Foundation in my hair is annoying. But I really try to keep the coverage where I need it. So if I don't need a ton of coverage down here, I won't add it. It's like patchwork on the face. And interestingly, actually, one of my favorite foundation application tools has become the cushion sponge. It's very similar to something like a beauty blender, except it absorbs much less product. So it's really ideal for these very fluid, very lightweight foundations. Just gets the product onto your face and not deep in the sponge, you know? I purchased my cushion sponges just on YesStyle. You can buy them in bulk. Um, and they're also really great for reapplying sunscreen throughout the day because they're great for really fluid formulas. The only con, my only complaint, is that they don't really like being washed. <laughs> I um, find that they just tend to fall apart, but I keep trying. If you have a washable foundation, cushion type product recommendation, I am all ears, let me know. Let's move on to under eye concealing and brightening. So I tend to approach under eyes with two things in mind. Number one, how can I correct or balance any discoloration? And number two, how can I bring a lot of light and brightness under the eyes? So I'm gonna start with the discoloration. I'm using the NARS Canel Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This is actually quite peachy. It's quite a bit peachier than my skin tone, but this is intentional because that peachy tone is going to balance any blue or purple discoloration I have just in the corner here. This is quite a high coverage concealer and I want to use as little as possible of this high coverage concealer around the eyes because that eye area is prone to getting cakey and crepey and makeup wants to settle. Don't blame your body for that. That is just the nature of thin skin. It happens to everyone, I promise. Creasing is normal. Okay, let's brighten and illuminate the eye area. Amani again takes the cake for brightening formulas. This is the Luminous Silk Concealer, another holy grail item. Give me light. I like a little bit here as I've developed a little bit of a hollow. I like a little bit between the brows. Again, really kind of brightening between the eyes. I like a little here where I'm red. The corners of the mouth are often quite dark and a lot of people get uh, pigmentation here. And then also, if you want to do a little bit of reverse contouring, I like to add a little bit of concealer down the jawline to amp up the contrast and give you a bit of an illusion of a sharper jawline. And again, just going to go back in with my puff and pat, 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 pat. You'll see my techniques often revolve around patting product in as opposed to sweeping. Matter of personal preference, but I'm a patter and a roller. The Armani Luminous Silk is one of my favorite brightening concealers of right now, but use whatever concealer you have in your collection. 
that fulfills that brightening effect. Some other favorites um, that I love, the um, First Aid Beauty Bendy Avocado Concealer, so brightening. The Armani High Precision Retouch, incredible. YSL Touche Eclat, anyone? So there's lots of products um, that do this on the market. Brightening concealer. Let us talk about blush. I really love a cream blush. I, it's possible that I could go back to powder blushes, but I think that's unlikely, although stranger things have happened. One of my favorite things to do is explore what kind of lip products I can apply on my cheeks in my collection. So here are some of my best, uh, my best discoveries. This lip color by Chanel is quite a watery lip formula. And I find that that works really beautifully on the cheeks. Got a luminous, sheer quality. Peach, we love a peach. Love a peach around here. Another fave, if you have any lacquer style lip products in your collection, I find that they offer a very high shine gloss on the cheeks, which is so editorial and beautiful. I love this color too, a little bit of like a desaturated, mauvey tone. Creamy lipstick formulas, sheer creamy lipstick formulas, so beautiful on the cheek. Here is Painterly by Lisa Eldridge. I think this is my favorite Lisa Eldridge product that I own. It gives this really beautiful, just bitten stain on the lips and beautiful formula on the cheeks. Really uh, luminous and creamy without being excessively glossy, if that's not really your vibe. And then in a similar family, I feel like these two are cousins, Earth Dust by Byredo. This one's a little bit more muted, a little bit more desaturated, but Absolutely, they are in the same family. And these are two of my favorite lip colors to wear on my cheeks. That kind of moisturizing lip formula. If you love a matte blush, the new Charlotte Tilbury uh, Matte Beauty Blush ones, oh, they are gorge. I find that they layer really beautifully on a dewy base and they don't kind of make the skin any more glossy than it already is. It just kind of takes on the, the finish of the foundation. Really beautiful formula, very easy to blend. I apply all of these products with my fingers. If it can't be applied with fingers, it's probably not gonna become in my regular routine because that's how I do. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful formula. It's very smoothing, I can feel it between my fingertips. Also, if you have any matte lipsticks that you love in your collection, the, the, the type that really brighten your face, you should try those on your cheeks. So this is um, a Power Matte by NARS, which is a matte formula, and it's another one that is beautiful on the cheeks. Amazing color. So yeah, these are some of my favorite blushes, but ultimately blush is, it's a matter of personal preference, the kind of finishes and the kind of colors and the kind of opacity that you like. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd give you a few of my favorites. For today's cheek, I think I'm feeling a little bit of the Lisa Eldridge Painterly. I think this is really beautiful. So I like to apply my blush, sort of wrapping around the cheekbone. So it's on one of the highest points of the cheekbone. I create a little circle and then I just dab around in a large spiral. And just like that, the product is blended. That's what's nice, I guess, with these sheer lip products. They're really easy to blend and they just mesh into the skin so beautifully. You can also build up slowly as opposed to going in full force. Oh, I just love the shine that this imparts. Beautiful, almost love it more on the cheeks than I do on the lips, actually. Although I do love it on lips. Oh. Such a pretty color. Love it. I think it's also a smart idea to just add a tiny bit of whatever blush you're using, just to introduce it a little bit in areas. This is so subtle. It's almost, you know, imperceivable to the eye, but what it does is it just introduces a little bit of that color throughout the face so that the blush appears to make sense with your skin tone. It kind of looks like it's in within the realm of your skin tone. So just a little bit on the chin, on the temples, high points of the cheek, maybe a touch on the nose, makes sense. Now let's move on to highlights. Ooh, one of my recent obsessions, the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Pillow Talk. So we all remember Spotlight, beautiful highlight. I am enjoying a little bit more of a saturated, pinky highlight nowadays as opposed to a really white highlight. I just feel like it's a little bit more subtle, a little bit more daytime. 
and I like how it meshes and melds in with my blush to give sort of a rosy high point to the face. This formula is stunning. It's like glossy skin in a bottle. Packaging, sort of hate it, sort of love it. I'm unclear. <laughs> I think I might also add a little bit of highlight to the cupid's bow. Delicious. Love it. So this is not a glossy skin makeup tutorial, although I do have one of those. This is more of a creamy skin look. So I'm going to mute down the shine just a little bit so that um, it has the skin has a little bit more of a creamy soft focus texture as opposed to like a high contrast shiny texture. So I'm going to go in with the Nikia Joy Cosmetics Velvet Finishing Powder. This product has a cult following and it's clear why. I've been using and loving this powder for a few years now. I'm going to use a precision brush because I like to precision powder. If you have an oily skin and you like to powder all over, it might make sense for you to use a large brush and do a, a soft veil, but I want to spot powder in, in this look. So this powder has um, in the ingredient list both silica and talc. So let us do a little bit of a deep dive on powders. So silica is, as an ingredient, is feather light. It is like imperceivable on the skin and it really does a great job of smoothing and blurring. So if you have areas where you've got pores or fine lines, it does a beautiful job of smoothing that. But for some purposes, I do like a little bit of talc in my, in my powders. Talc is more absorbent. It makes the, the powder more powerful and I do like a more talc based powders around the eyes because I find that it really helps to mattify, keeps any oils from kind of deteriorating my eye makeup and really does an optical illusion of flattening the under eye area. By mattifying and smoothing it creates the illusion that my under eye is really flat and smooth. And you don't really get that in the same way with silica. This powder has both the silica and the talc and so it shares features of both. And I find for that reason, it's a really versatile powder for under the eyes. If you have oily skin and you struggle with makeup longevity, then now would be the time to use a film forming makeup spray, something like Urban Decay All Nighter, Scandinavia, one of those classic ones. I have a little bit more of a drier skin type and I find that my foundation is more likely to crack throughout the day than it is to like get oily necessarily. Um, so I find that a little bit of a light setting spray like the Fenty Beauty What It Do Dewy Setting Mist can be really helpful. But I'm not gonna go overboard because I used to go kind of overboard. Um, I think I'm just gonna stick myself to one, two, go. That's it for our creamy complexion tutorial. Let me know in the comment section down below, what would you like to see from me next? Also, if you would like to see a little bit more of my face, then you can come say hello to me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy. I would love to chat to you there. We shall speak soon. Bye.